Hello friends and welcome. All right, this is like attempt number three. So I already have our scripture up and available. When I open the Bible randomly, this is where the Lord took me. Lord, please bless the hearing of your word. Mark chapter 16, 14 through 20. Afterward, he appeared unto the 11 as they sat at meat and upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. So we're all pretty familiar with the story, um, especially Thomas. He said, if, you know, unless I can stick my fingers in his palms and my hand in his side, I'm not going to believe that he's risen from the dead. There will be times, and there are times now, where we lack faith. Um, sometimes, you know, there are instances where people are afraid that they're going to lose their job. So they may take a mark, they may take an injection, whatever, because for that moment, they had lost their faith. Okay. Whenever the rapture happens and those left behind, they're going to be going through some, some big emotional turmoil and some post traumatic distress. So we've got to keep praying. I mean, yesterday I fasted and pray. I encourage everybody to do that as well. We've got to keep praying for them. Okay, let's continue on. So Jesus has already gone after people, his closest people for their lack of faith. Let's continue in verse 15. And he said to them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay, these are Jesus's words. These aren't the words of an angel and, you know, taken a lot of times out of context in Revelation 14. These are Jesus's own words. This sums up the gospel. And we'll continue verse 17. And these things shall follow them that believe, especially in these end times, in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Okay, drinking and being injected with, okay, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So if there is any doubt in these end times, who to trust, who to believe, Okay, these are some tests that the Lord has provided for us through his Holy Spirit. Continuing, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly seal, excuse me, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. All right, so this is a really important passage because the temptation is going to be to exclude people, to keep them out. Uh, we see this in Galatians in particular. Uh, salvation being based on the flesh. Well, if you have any doubt of what, you know, God's grace looks like, of what faith looks like, read this chapter. Look at these passages. Just read the Bible. Okay, so moving on to our next topic, how are the markets doing? Well, the past couple of days, they have been getting stronger after really taking a wailing from Mercury. <clears throat> Oops, let's get back to today. And we're going to bring Mercury up. So the surprising thing was, uh, we talked in our last video that was that Mercury started impacting the markets about, you know, a week before it went into conjunction with the sun. So that was pretty surprising. Um, but we should, you know, Kind of get used to that. Things are intensifying. Uh, Mercury will probably, you know, the stocks will probably be okay until it starts its way back toward the sun 
uh, that's going to be the first week in February. So be prayerful about that, how God wants you to, you know, what he wants you to do with your money. Do you need to invest it in any car repairs, going to the dentist, um, getting supplies, I mean, water, don't overlook water, um, or, you know, any health aids. Somebody in your family is prone to tooth decay, get things that will help that naturally, natural remedies, aspirin, whatever. Okay, so speaking of the times, um, you know, Mercury will be in conjunction with the sun. We just had the moon pass um, that right there. Uh, it'll be in conjunction with the sun and the moon at the end of March, which leads us to our timeline. Now, this is going to look way different than it did before. Oops. All right. And what I did was I went ahead and expanded it because it's not necessarily going to be just about the sun going into conjunction with these planets. What happens when they go into conjunction with each other? All right. So this has been expanded some and updated. Uh, this top portion, I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger, is basically this, the highlights of where we are up until the spring, late mid to late spring. So right now we're here waiting on the, uh, the fourth seal to come in and into its strength. Now we know from Revelation 116 that the sun strengthens the signs that it's associated with. So that that's going to be a tough day stay in prayer for your family expect to see a lot of stories in the news about death be it celebrities um, be it you know populations of people it may not you know open with a big bang god seems to have been pretty merciful to us um but once we see the sixth seal open when Neptune goes in conjunction with the sun, it might be a whole different story. Revelation 6, 8 says, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of death the earth. So there are those who say, and I'm not saying I necessarily believe this myself, at least not 100%, that the people who die at this time, they will be unbelievers. Now, obviously, there will be some believers that die as well. I don't think God's going to put a hold on that necessarily. <clears throat> but the ones that will experience this will likely be be those who are not written, whose names are not written in the book of life. And in fact, you know, there could be martyrs who are killed at this time as well. The interesting thing about this verse is that it references the fourth part of the earth. And so what will that look like? Well, some say it will look like this. Um, just meteor strikes, uh, pummeling the earth. Let me orient this a little better. And that is something that we will perhaps see with the sixth seal. Now, this is one of the judgments of the sixth seal, the stars uh, falling from the sky. Will it happen exactly the, the day that we think it will? Well, we'll see. And this ties back into how will the horsemen be interacting with each other. So we see here that the fourth seal will open very early February. Uh, Aquarius did call uh, Saturn out in December, and now the sun will be strengthening. That's why the there's a little bit of... Um, mismatch in the order here. Uh, and then we saw the fifth seal open 
when the sun went into conjunction with Venus. This was in Sagittarius, uh, the same day that the Supreme Court began hearing the Biden administration mandates on the injection. So some of the things that have clued me into the interaction, uh, one being from Revelation 12, we see the war in heaven between Michael and the red dragon. And we see that in Revelation 12, starting with verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, a lot of people have been wondering, oh, when does this happen? Well, it may happen in early April, just prior to Passover, when we expect to see some movement from the false prophet, if not sooner. And I'll have links below in terms of what a lot of that means. Uh, we will also be looking at some of the interaction between the false prophet, the Antichrist figure or son of perdition, and the red dragon. Uh, I'm not going to do it uh, through Stellarium because of the jumpiness or the glitches, uh, but I have taken some screen captures of pertinent dates. All right. So let's go ahead and continue uh, just to get some more context here because I love taking things in context. Uh, <clears throat> verse 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death, okay? And this could be giving us some more clues in terms of the timeline of the martyrdom. We have explored that. Let me make this a little bigger there. There have been some changes. <clears throat> we have explored that possibility happening in May, uh, just following comment 2021 A1 Leonard, and we're again, we're going to do that in a little bit here. Uh, I also found in my research an alternate day, which could be a little, which would be a little later. Uh, and that, one moment, that could be over here in October uh, when I see uh, this comet. C2017 K2 pan stars uh, going through the altar constellation of Ara, as well as lupus, which is a dog or canine that is being uh, speared through the neck. So we'll take a look at that as well. But as you can see, I mean, I'll just take it all the way to the end. What we're looking at here are some of the interactions between the horsemen. We've got Mars, the red horse, Mercury, the black horse. And I may not even know necessarily what to expect. It may be nothing, uh, but these could be pertinent dates. So for those who want to look at more of a granul granular view of our timeline, uh, this lower one will have a lot of those interactions captured here. Okay, so, and we're gonna take a look at some of those interactions now. What I went ahead and did is spent some time and recorded 10 second frames of each of these comets. And I've got the dates up here. So, as of January, late January, 2022, excuse me, uh, the sun is over here in Capricorn, but we see pan stars, and this is the red dragon over here on the left, that comet, uh, K2 pan stars, K2 abyss, 
Uh, I did these in order of appearance in the book of Revelation. So it's just kind of hanging out here. It's between Aquila and the head of Ophuicus, who is the Christ Redeemer figure uh, wrestling the serpent. And you can see Aquarius over here. Aquarius is going to be more in the middle with the comet A1 Leonard frame. And then over here in the middle as well with the false prophet C202103. So we've got, you know, Comet Leonard is still kind of kind of near Microscopium, the Southern Fish, Pisces Australis and Groose, a bird constellation. There's actually quite a few bird constellations and need to learn more a little bit about that. Uh, it's interesting how I, you know, with my research, I've been learning more about how to interpret the signs in the heavens. And there was one, it was not Christian at all website that I was looking at, but they were like, yeah, Saturn and Pluto, you know, going into conjunction, this is a really bad sign. Uh, and then was that the one with uh, this, they were forecasting the new world order. I think that was actually, it could have been that one. Um, they're like, hey, it's coming. We can see this in the stars. And I'm like, how do they know? How did they know that? So these are all very interesting things. And it's, it's going to get more interesting. So uh, we've got the false prophet over here near the stream, water stream of Aquarius. He never makes it into it. Uh, and that likely symbolizing that, you know, it's just not, you know, in the cards for this new religious system to go into that next age, the, the age of Aquarius that we saw from, from our last video, where we have here in Luke 22, 10, and he said unto them, behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet to you, bearing a pitcher of water, follow him into the house where he enters. So not trying to get spooky on anybody. We're just looking at the signs in the heavens and how they correlate with what we read in the Bible. Now, so this is January. We're going to go forward a bit into February. Uh, comma A1 Leonard is still near Microscopium. And then over here, the false prophet uh, comet is heading into Pisces. And this is the end of February, we may see some movement from that character. And I mean like global movement. Uh, next frame, we've got March 2022. Uh, we've got a little bit of movement from K2, the great dragon getting closer to Aquila. One moment. And by March, uh, end of March, comet Leonard, the Antichrist comet is full bore into microscopium the microscope symbolizing perhaps the biological warfare that may be heating up at the end of uh, March. And then the false prophet comet is busy getting closer into Pisces, the church uh, fishers of men constellation, but it's also somewhat near Cetus, the sea beast. Uh, next, we've got... Pan stars, K2, K2 abyss, uh, red dragon still getting closer to Aquila, followed by uh, Leonard, A1 Leonard, the Antichrist. Uh, he is getting closer to the hooves of Sagittarius, well out of microscopium by now. And then on to the false prophet, uh, you know, technically very close to the water beast Cetus over there and then right under the hooves of Taurus. We're going to see that a lot with this unholy trinity that, for whatever reason, symbolizing their, their defeat, they transit in the hooves or the feet of these constellations. We're going to see that uh, again with the false, excuse me, the false prophet comet as it goes into the next constellation after Taurus, which is Perseus, goes right into his feet, and we'll see that here in a moment. Okay, so I went ahead and I took us to early May in this instance. Uh, the great dragon is still near the wings of Aquila, but this is the date, 
Cinco de Mayo, for whatever reason, that Comet A1 Leonard, the Antichrist Comet, is right in the hooves of the Archer, Sagittarius. Now let's take a look at the timeline here. So beginning of May is when we have this, perhaps this head wound taking place. Uh, false prophet is likely already on the scene. There will likely have also been some catastrophes. Uh, I've got a conjunction between Venus and the, bail, the Pale Horseman. Uh, end of March may signify a, a hard time for the church or just for mankind in general with the strengthening of that pale horse. Okay, uh, and then we have right over here, the false prophet Pan Stars uh, C 202103 going right into the feet of Perseus. So, you know, as the Antichrist is sustaining a head wound, this may also be a difficult time for the false prophet as well. We know that our Father God in heaven has all sorts of things planned against this beast system. All right, so heading into June, we have uh, K2 Pan Stars, the Red Dragon, heading a little closer to Afuicus, the Redeemer. No confrontation yet. All right, and then K2 Pan Stars is still hanging out between Aphuicus, the Redeemer, and Aquila, one of our four living creatures from Revelation 4. And then at this point, we've already uh, passed through that 10 days of perhaps tribulation as C2021 A1 Leonard, the Antichrist Comet, goes right through that crown of Sagittarius the Archer. Uh, by this time, early June, the false prophet has already reached Draco the dragon. So he may already have gone from, you know, this appearance of a lamb to, okay, if you're following this guy, you shouldn't be because you should know better. Like his true colors are going to come out. Okay, so going into early July, we are getting some movement with the Red Dragon. It is right in the heart of Ophuicus. So some sort of confrontation there, perhaps. Uh, it could be a blow, you know, a, a blow to that system. Uh, and then next with the Antichrist in the heart of Scorpio conflict. So another indicator that that may very well be happening. This is crazy. So we've got the heart of Ophuicus, the heart of Scorpio, and then the false prophet going right to the butt of Draco the dragon. Don't know what's going on there, but a lot of symbolic movement here. All right. And so come August, what we'll have, we've got a transit now for the red dragon heading toward the scales of Libra, as well as Scorpio. Those two constellations are very close together and away from the Redeemer uh, constellation of Huicus. Next, uh, with the Antichrist comet or son of perdition, uh, he's going to be right in the um, kind of the, the, uh, the claws of Scorpio. Um, that used to be that Libra and Scorpio were the same constellation. So sometimes people will equate the claws of Scorpio with some sort of balance or judgment. Uh, I believe in the next month, uh, the next frame, we will see these two basically doing a high five, which is extremely rare, obviously, to see this um, with the magnitude of space that we're looking at. Uh, then looking back at the false prophet over here on the right, he's heading right into the head of Boots or Buddhist, the shepherd constellation, uh, which gave Mars the dagger when uh, it went into conjunction with the sun or the great sword or the great dagger as it's uh, noted in the Greek. All right, so September um, for the red dragon, it's right in, you know, the, the claws of Scorpio. And then we see with this middle frame here, 
their A1 uh, Antichrist comma and the, the red dragon are basically doing a high five. So this definitely may be a time of strengthening for uh, these two characters. Uh, and then the false prophet comet seems to be heading toward the northern crown here between Buddhist and Hercules. So interesting that maybe it's fighting for power, uh, trying to wrestle it from God's chosen people. Okay, so this one is going to be a tough scene. The red dragon comet is heading right into the head area of Lupus, which was a dog that was killed by this centaur. I'm not totally familiar with this story. Um, so we're seeing that happen as the Antichrist comet is heading through Scorpio, kind of toward Christ the Redeemer. But this comet, the Red Dragon Comet K2, will be around the head of Lupus, this animal with a head wound for about 10 days. So this could be an alternate time of um, the 10 day tribulation that's mentioned in Revelation chapter two with the church at, I believe it's Sardis. And then lastly, at this time, we've got the false prophet comet going right through the heart of Hercules. So another indicator perhaps of martyrdom here. Now, just backing up a second, a lot of times these signs are warnings. They're not the actual event. Uh, just like with our uh, four horsemen, they have a, had a living creature calling them out before they were strengthened by the sun. So it's not unlikely that that head wound is actually just a warning. Uh, we're going to see uh, K2 pan stars, the red dragon comet heading out of the Lupus K9 constellation. It's going to actually start heading toward Aura. And now that I think about it, I think that was the actual 10 day scenario that I was thinking of. Um, the other comet, A1 Leonard, is kind of heading out of Scorpio and toward Ophicus. Uh, the false prophet uh, is still wrestling with Hercules as Hercules wrestles with the six-headed serpent Hydra. Now it's also worth mentioning that at this time, early November, we've got the Sun and Venus and Mercury going into conjunction. Uh, we've got a horseman representing famine and economic collapse along with the fifth seal martyr planet all going into conjunction with the sun. So perhaps that would mean some severe times of famine, uh, even for the elect, even for the those who are um, the remnant, if you will. And heading into December, still 2022, we see that the red dragon comet K2 pan stars is right in the heart of Aura. This could be the middle of that 10 day period there. Um, and we've got that on our timeline. Let's take a look. Okay, so really either of these days or dates could spell trouble for the church. This may be a warning for this one. Uh, they're just all very peculiar uh, activities by this comet going through, you know, violent portions of constellations and then a uh, constellation representing the altar where the saints are praying under in Revelation chapter 6. Uh, prior to this, uh, we see the opening of the red, uh, the seventh seal uh, in August. And that's going to perhaps last. We're going to talk about that. The seventh seal opens with silence for a half hour. So it's a little difficult to gauge. Um, however, the trumpets, uh, they're going to be sounded as, let's take a look, because the angel discusses uh, the altar in Revelation chapter 8. 
we see here uh, Revelation 8, verse 1, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. So the seventh seal is its own event. Um, it does come with a, a gap in time. Uh, and that may, you know, work well for the beast kingdom, which is trying to establish itself. And we have some other events uh, from the book of Amos. A, I may may pull them in in another video. Uh, we're going to try to get through the activities of the unholy trinity, of the red dragon, son of perdition, antichrist, and the false prophet for now. And so actually, I will leave it at that at the end of 2022, those activities, uh, just because of time issues. Let's go ahead and close as we normally do with some scripture. Lord, please show us marvelous and amazing things in your word. In Jesus' name I pray. All right, so we are taken to Revelation. Oh, that's the first time that's happened. Uh, I've got obviously just about everything underlined here. Um, but one thing, well, a couple things. Uh, Revelation 8, starting with verse 10, the third angel sounded his trumpet and a great star blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. Uh, jumping down to verse 13, As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blasts about to be sounded by the three other angels. And that's when the demonic entities begin to appear. And we have the actual opening of the abyss, which Comet K2, Pan Stars, the Red Dragon is about to perform. Um, Wormwood, of course, being a comet or the name of a planet or something that we, a lot of the watchmen anticipate is going to come into our proximity of the earth very quickly, um, within months. It uh, could be with the sixth seal, but I do want to bring your attention to this video over here. Uh, this is on Gil Broussard's YouTube channel. If you haven't um, seen it yet, it's not a terribly long. Uh, it's just uh, Planet 7X, and he's just going through um, a lot of information in terms of what to expect in the heavens. So if you haven't seen that yet, I'll have a link below for you. Um, other than that, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Let's close out with some prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you so much. You are always good, and you show us great and marvelous things, and you actually warn us because of your great and immense love for us, God. We are just humbled. Um, we just humble ourselves before you, Lord. You are good. Uh, it does seem that there's going to be some intense tribulation happening, um, at least by the end of this year. Lord Jesus, help us to be prepared for that spiritually, physically, emotionally. However that transpires, um, we know that we can trust in you and we can trust in other people, regardless of their background, if, you know, if they pass these requirements that you have given us in Mark 16, 14 through 20. Thank you so much for that, God. We worship you. We love you. And we place our faith in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless.